Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while, <laughs> believe me, I know, but some things are gonna be changing. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit in today's video, but the main purpose of today's video is we're gonna take a look at the brand new DJI Osmo Action 4. And is it gonna be my new moto vlogging rig? What else am I gonna use this camera for? Who knows, but you're gonna find out in this video. So I really wanted to get this camera and check it out. Many of you may have seen some of the videos in the past I've done, uh, especially with the DJI Osmo Action 3, which turned out, I had one of the first ones that came off the assembly line and it had the focusing problem that we've talked about, everybody's done videos about it, which basically rendered it useless. Now, yeah, I could have sent it back to DJI and done all of that, but for me, it was just easier just to start using the GoPro again. So that's what I did. I just went back to my GoPro Hero 11 Black and filmed, you know, moto vlogs and stuff like that, you know, with, with that camera. Um, and then I had to kind of stop making content for a little bit and we're gonna talk about that in an upcoming video. But today's video, I kind of wanted to see what the capabilities of this camera are beyond just moto vlogging. What if I wanted to use this for an everyday vlog instead of taking my big, you know, Sony FX3 rig with the microphone and all of that? Is this camera capable of just doing a cool content video, whether it's a vlog, no matter what it is? So I had to go out and do some running. We're gonna run down here. My truck is absolutely filthy. So I'm gonna get it washed real quick and then we're gonna hop on the, the Harley Davidson Street Glide pop this on the helmet, see what it does look like uh, in a moto vlog you know, type situation. I, I have a feeling based on everything that I've seen about this camera that I'm gonna love it. One inch sensor, which means that it's gonna be great in low light. I don't do a lot of filming you know, at night or in low light scenarios. But the one thing I do love about the camera is it is 10 bit capable. So you're gonna get that amazing color space. Um, uh, right now we're shooting, I kind of set the camera up the way that I thought I wanted it to be. So we're shooting 24 frames a second in the D-Log uh, setting. I went in and I'm right now I'm, I'm playing around. The filmmaker in me hates that I'm not using a shutter speed twice the frame rate, which in this case would be 48 or 50 on most cameras. Um, so I, I, I'm doing the, the auto because I want to see what it's like, like when you're in a vehicle like this, sometimes the sun is in front of you and you're getting the great light. Sometimes it's behind you and you're getting negative light and there's no fill and, and it gets too dark. So I just put it on auto because I wanted to see, you know, what this camera is really capable of and what the image quality of it is. Because truth be told, I am going to start making more content. I get a lot of questions from you guys and a little bit of what I want to talk about today um, let's see, like right now, we, we're in kind of a shadow and the lighting still looks good on the camera. Um, I'm gonna kind of tell you what's been going on a little bit, why I've not been uploading regular content. A lot of it, honestly, boils down to analysis paralysis. I mean, how many of you guys do that? You get to thinking about something so hard and so much and it consumes you and it overwhelms you and then you end up basically doing nothing. That's if I'm being 100% honest, that's, uh, that's a big piece of why I've not been making content. Um, I think I've made one video since moving back to Nashville and like being back here in Nashville full time. So I want that to change and I've taken some steps to hopefully change that. But maybe when we hop on the motorcycle, um, I'll kind of walk you guys through what I'm thinking because I would love to get your feedback on it as well. You know, wh what kind of videos you guys want to see. Of course, we're going to keep up with motorcycle stuff, but I digress. I'll get into that more in a little bit. Right now, what I'm using is I've got this thing mounted with just the regular GoPro uh, windshield uh, mount. The one thing I do love about the Osmo Action line of cameras is the magnetic system that it uses to clip on the cameras. It makes it very simple 
to not have to unscrew that screw every time and then put it on something else. You can have your helmet set up. You can have, like I've got uh, the, uh, the bar that came with this thing. We're gonna try this thing out as well because this camera has amazing stabilization. It's got rock steady, rock steady plus uh, without a lot of cropping. So uh, we'll definitely, we'll give this thing a shot as well. But you can just simply unpinch the little magnets on this camera and have your helmet set up have a, a car mount like this set up. You can have all of this set up where it's just easy to move from one thing to the other. Now, one thing that I will say is we are using the DJI mic, original DJ, now they're coming out with the DJI mic too. This is just the regular DJI mic that comes in uh, this case. Remember, it's got the, the uh, two transmitters and the one receiver, and I've got the receiver plugged into the DJI Osmo Action four with the USB-C connection. So hopefully the audio is really good. One of the things that I did do was I went into the settings on the receiver. I turned the gain down to, I think, minus five. And then I turned the gain on the camera itself all the way down to negative 12. That's what's gonna help us not clip the audio. We're not gonna have that annoying audio. It might be a little different when we get on the motorcycle, we'll see. Um, but I'm hoping that I can just set and leave uh, these settings exactly the way that they are right now. That, that's my hope and that's my plan. Hold on, we're gonna, we're gonna get the car washed here. How's it going? Good, you doing all right? Awesome. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. See you soon. Have a good one. I'll tell you one thing, side note. Um, that is one thing I have really loved about moving back to Nashville. Um, not that people are not nice or great or whatever in California, but people here in the South where I'm from, it's just, they're just amazing like that. I mean, this guy's here at the car wash, feeding people through and happy to be here saying, hello, how's your day? That, that is always just to me, that is, it's one of the things I love about being from the South. Not saying that there's not good people everywhere, but there are really good people here in Nashville. I've not talked a lot about that either, about being back. It feels like I haven't been back a whole lot because I spend still a week to two weeks every month in California, which speaking of, I bought another motorcycle that I do keep in California and I have not even done a video about that motorcycle. So that's something that we've got to get on the channel as well. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know, you've probably seen it. If you don't follow me on Instagram, click the leather. We'll put something down there. It's at the Steve Freeman. Um, but anyway, looking at the screen, this thing's handling the light fairly well. And the one thing, I do not have um, an ND filter. I, I wanted to do this without the ND filter with the auto exposure to see what this thing really is doing. It might be blowing out my face um, a little bit, but I do have the ND filters. And it's probably getting a little noisy now. What is it? Honestly, there is something. What is it about getting a haircut and getting your cars washed? There's just something about it. Just you, you feel better. Gives you a better outlook on life. So I can honestly say, if the footage looks anything like what it looks like on the front screen of this Action 4 and or the, whatever it's called, the Mimo app or whatever, I think I'm gonna be really pleased uh, with this camera. The real telltale sign for me is, what does it look like when we're moto vlogging? When we, when we put this thing in the chin mount and we're heading down the road on a beautiful day What's it look like? Is it clear? 
The other thing I wanted to check, I mean, I've not heard anybody having any problems with focusing with their Action 4 like they did with the Action 3, but it will be, uh, it'll be interesting to see what this footage looks like. We'll get out on the bike and we'll ride around a little bit and, and see what that looks like as well. And then we'll draw some conclusions uh, and see what we think. Uh, right, I'm happy with the stabilization. I mean, it looks great on this mount and everything's kind of tucked up behind the mirror out of the way. I, I like it. The real question is that I see that, that happens a lot that's going on in the camera world right now is people are trying to find an excuse for these cameras to replace cameras like we have at my production company, whether it's the Sony FX3, which many of you may have heard, uh, they chose and filmed the new movie that's out now with John David Washington, the creator. That movie was filmed with the Sony FX3. Um, now people that are in the vlog space, YouTube space, all that, you know, they've, they've spent the thousands and thousands of dollars as I have on all of these Sony FX6s, FX3s, FX9s, FX30s. But could we eventually get to a point where a camera like this with a one inch sensor, great in low light, stab uh, stability, amazing stability, could you use a camera like this for settings and videos like vlogs instead of having the big camera. I know that's what everybody wants. I know it's what I prefer. I just, for whatever reason, I have this thing of not wanting to be out in public with this big, huge camera. It just, it makes me uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable for other people because I don't want to make other people uncomfortable which is weird because everybody says that I'm so intimidating, but I, I, I'm really a nice guy. I, I really do think about other people. And it's like, I, I, I don't want to make them uncomfortable. Therefore, I don't want to be uncomfortable. So it's interesting. These cameras are with every, each one they're coming out with, it, there's, there's just more and more and more and more reasons for these to actually be able to replace you know, a full size, full frame cinema camera, if you will. So I'm anxious to see. Uh, also, I've got this for you camera files. Um, I have this set on, I think I've got it set on wide. I don't think I've got it set on ultra wide. Um, so I think, I think I've got it set on wide. Ultra wide's even wider. Um, which for moto vlogging, may be something that you want, dude, you, you gotta look coming out of your parking space. You gotta look. Which he did not do. Um, sorry guys, I'm backing into this parking space. Okay, we're back in the parking space. All right, we're gonna run and hop on the street glide. I was gonna take the Pan America out today, but I think, I think I'm gonna hop on the street glide. It's just easier. All right, let's go hop on the street glide. Let's see what this thing's like in a moto vlog scenario, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we are out on the street glide now. Uh, I am having to kind of hold my head a little funny because I forgot the uh, extension for the chin mount that that allows the the Osmo Action 4 to tilt up more because like right now just sitting in there it's kind of tilted down so you're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of this and not a lot of that up there so when we get out here on the road uh, I'll, I'll kind of try to tilt my head back a little bit like that so you guys can see more uh, out because I really want to see what the field of view on this camera is and how much I like it. Again, we've got we're using auto exposure. We're framing. Uh, we're shooting at 24 frames a second. D log. Um, and we are on the. I believe we're. We, I think we are on the ultra wide uh, setting. Also, for those of you following along, keeping score on the audio front, I did have to change the audio settings a little bit. We are now negative 12 on the transmitter, uh, negative 12 on the camera. Um, and still the, uh, the audio is, is up there almost touching the yellow, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. We're not clipping by any means, 
but we literally had to, to just destroy all of the gain from both the camera and the DJI mic. One of the things that I'm interested on uh, in seeing is we've we, I've got another video coming about the DJI Osmo or Pocket Osmo 3 or whatever it is. I, I just got it the other day. And the new version of the DJI mic, the DJI mic 2, uh, comes with that new camera setup. So I am anxious to, and it connects automatically. That is one of the things that I wish they would do with the Osmo Action series, especially with the DJI Osmo Action 4. Update the firmware to allow, if you're using a DJI mic, just allow it to connect automatically. You know, let's, we don't, we don't need that uh, receiver with the, either the, you know, the, using the cable or the, the iPhone adapter, which is cool, but really the USB-C to be able to plug into the uh, Osmo Action cameras to, to get the audio from the receiver. Let's just have it like the, po the uh, Osmo Pocket 3 where it connects automatically. That would be so cool. Solve a lot of audio issues and a lot of audio problems for sure. Uh, but anyway, here's kind of one of the things that I wanted to, uh, to talk about in this video as well is one of the reasons that I have not been making content. I said earlier, analysis paralysis. I got to looking at my channel. I'm like, I don't want to do, I, I love motorcycles and I ride motorcycles all the time, but I don't want all of my content to be about just motorcycles and riding motorcycles, even though, a gr and I probably will make tons of content around it, but it's like, I didn't want that to become everything. I didn't want that to be my entire channel's existence. And then I'm like, man, I'm into so many other things. I'm really getting, okay, y'all, I'm gonna have to be real honest about something here. I may or may not be turning into a prepper uh, in, in all seriousness. Uh, I have been watching and listening to podcasts like the Sean Ryan show and uh, Mike Glover. And I love what those guys are into. I've always been uh, huge into GUNS. Uh, I'm a huge Second Amendment guy. I, I own a lot, believe in them, believe in responsible use, um, all of that stuff. So I've been caught up, and I don't know about y'all, but I've been caught up in these EDC videos, everyday carry videos, and not necessarily becoming the guy with the tinfoil that's just crazy prepping and, you know, stocking hundreds of years worth of food and food in bags and, you know, 35 cases of water. I, I'm not talking about that kind of thing. I, I'm, I'm talking about being prepared. We live in a, in a crazy world right now, in a crazy time that played somewhat into our decision to leave Southern California and move back to, to Tennessee, to Nashville. We, we live in crazy times. There, there's crazy stuff happening all over the place. The world is not as safe as it once was. It's not the world that we all wish that we, that we lived in. Um, that being said, I believe in being prepared I believe, for any situation. It's, it's called situational awareness. You know, being being aware of your surroundings, being around, you know, other people in public situations. And unfortunately, there's just bad people. And so I've kind of gotten into that. So it's like, man, I wouldn't mind actually mind making some videos kind of talking about my journey and starting to getting into EDC and prep and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So look, the moral of the story is that is why I have not been making content is because I, I was kind of getting into my own head analysis paralysis of going, okay, well, it has to be this kind of content. I can't really do m multiple different things. I have to focus on this one thing and I'm going to lose interest. And I had already started losing interest and, you know, filming all this stuff. It's not easy when you, when you have the standards that I have, it's not as easy as just, all right, throw on the GoPro, hit record, and let's go. It, it's just not that easy. Look, they're not, I'm not, you know, bad mouthing anybody or, or critiquing anybody, but there are a lot of channels that are that way. They're, they're just not very high quality content. This may not be high quality content, you know, with me driving down the road with my head cocked back so that y'all can see something besides the top of the gas tank. Um, but, 
I want to make great videos from a content standpoint. I, I really do, you know, I'm getting the, the studio set up to where we can shoot some more videos like that, some more product, you know, reviews. And so I'm, I'm really hard on myself when it comes to that. And so a lot of times, instead of just getting out and filming and having a good time and making content, I overanalyze it and then it, it paralyzes me and I don't end up doing anything. But I have been so busy here lately with flying back and forth to California and with work that it's like I, I was telling my wife last night, I have got to start creating content again for me because it's the one thing that I do for me that is a creative outlet for me that I'm not worried about pleasing anybody else. It's just a thing of meeting my own standards, having a good time and enjoying it. So that's kind of where I'm at. And I've made a commitment to myself that I am going to start putting out at least one video every week. I haven't decided what day that's going to be, Friday or Saturday probably. And then it might morph into two videos a week, maybe like on a Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, but I've got to start doing it for me because I miss it. I miss the uh, engagement with you guys. Just this morning I got on, logged into the YouTube channel, saw a whole bunch of comments that I had, uh, that I had never responded to and started responding to people and people responding right away. And it's like, man, I, I really, really, really miss that. I miss the community aspect of it. So long story short, I am making a commitment to you guys and to myself to actually start making content again. It's good for my soul, good for my spirit. And I want to make things that are entertaining for you guys that you'll want to watch, you'll want to be a part of, and you'll want to you know, stay a member of the community, tell other people, and have other people come join our awesome community. A lot of it probably will be, you know, motorcycle content because I love motorcycles and I love being out on my motorcycles as much as humanly possible. So that probably will be a big piece of the content. But then I also want to talk to you about guys about gear, just like this video we're doing. And we're kind of taking a look and reviewing the Osmo Action 4. We're going to do the Osmo Pocket 3 that just came out. Plus, we've got some other other gear that I really want to take a look at. And then also, like I said, some different kind of videos that are more about preparedness and EDC and possibly even get into some of the other things I enjoy, like GUNS and things like that. We can have those conversations as well. So that's kind of what I wanted to, to talk to you guys about and and let you know what's going on and 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 kind of where I've been and and where I've been in my life and and I've like I said I've reached a point where I really understand that I don't have any other goal with creating content other than creating content for myself because it fills my soul and and as a creative you've got to have something yeah we shoot films and docu-series and every commercials, everything else for other people, but that doesn't feed my creative outlet. That's work. That's business. That's, that's what you do to pay the bills. Um, so I, I want to do this for me. And so I'm actually really looking forward to creating content again. And I, I hope you guys will follow along in the journey with me and enjoy the content that I'm planning on making. Um, I think you'll find it interesting and fun. Uh, but we'll see. We're going to go on a lot of trips. One of the things that I'm trying to plan for 2024 is really doing some adventure bike trips, doing some of the BDR uh, routes all over the United States. One of the things I would love to do and I'm planning on doing, for those of you that live out west on the west coast, have a look at that. $2.99 a gallon. God, I love Nashville. Love Tennessee. Love the south. Anyway, I've got some things planned, I've got some trips planned, and I, and I really wanna be more a part of that community as well. And of course, making content out of those things and taking you guys along for the ride and the journey is, is, a, is a major part of, uh, of what I've got planned. So uh, I really hope that this camera looks awesome. I really like this setup. I have been a huge fan of DJI for a very long time. I own, I think, three or four of their drones um, we've got the Osmo Action 3, which because of the focusing issue, we don't use at all. Um, I've got, so, you know, we've got the Pocket 3 now. 
Um, I love their gear and I want it to be perfect for the execution that I want to use it for. And I think that it just might be possible with this camera. I really do. One thing, again, like I said that I would like to see is wireless or Bluetooth integration with the DJI mic. I would love to see that to where you turn on the camera, you turn on the mic, and they automatically connect just like they do with the Osmo Pocket 3, uh, the, new, uh, the new thing that just came out. And stay tuned to the channel. We're going to have a video on that uh, coming up. I really wanted to take the camera out and see if I could create something as special, as cinematic with that, that uh, action or the, uh, the Pocket 3 as I could with like my Sony FX3. And look, I, I know that's a challenge, uh, but it's something that I wanted to do. And I think you're gonna be really, really shocked at how this thing turned out. It, it actually, it blew my mind. And I, I also think there's a place for it in the moto vlogging world. Oddly enough, they do make an attachment that goes on the handlebar that that uh, Pocket 3 snaps in. So you could technically use it, you know, as a moto vlog camera. You could have it, you know, right here on your vest or, you know, you could probably not wise to advise this, but I mean, you could actually hold it. Same thing you could do with this camera as well, but uh, probably not advised. Uh, but yeah, I love, I think I'm going to like this camera. I'm anxious to get it back and see the footage completely edited and see, my God, is it not beautiful out here? It's middle of November. The leaves have changed. One of the many things I really did miss about living here. I get a lot of questions because I go back and forth so much. People, hey, do you regret, you know, leaving California? No, I do not. Don't get me wrong. There's some amazing people. Still some of my best friends in the world live there. Um, absolutely love the people in Orange County, but I do not regret leaving. There's just, there's just something about, you know, for me, this is home. So there's also just something about being home that's amazing. But I will say that I miss this. I mean, this, this you don't get this in Southern California. Yeah, you have the beach and you can also have, you know, the mountains and the desert look. And if, you know, if you're all about that, then it's super cool. And it's the perfect place. And nobody, I mean, nobody loves riding the PCH more than I do. But there is something about hitting a back road in the South like this, where you're just remote. The houses aren't right on top of each other. Kind of like we saw the guy at the car wash, just nice people, friendly for no reason. I don't know that guy from Adam, never seen him before in my life. And uh, so, no, I, I don't regret the move. What I do regret is not really diving in and making more headway on making amazing content when we got here back in February, March. That I do miss. And I wish, and that's kind of what I'm doing now is like I'm trying to make up for that hiccup and that mistake and really commit to, to doing something and, and doing it right. So I'm looking forward to making content, that's for sure.
live dinosaurs here in Nashville. It is a little hard to believe. It is the middle of November, and it's actually warm out. I was worried that I didn't put a jacket on. I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to freeze to death. But no, man, the sun's out, and it's actually pretty warm. All right, so I think that's going to wrap up the moto vlog portion. I'm anxious to see what you guys think. Uh, drop a comment down in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this footage. Do you like it better than the GoPro Hero 12 or the GoPro Hero 11 or even the Osmo Action 3 for that matter? Or, you know, a lot of people are uh, are using the uh, the 360 cameras. I just still just not my thing. I've, I've had them contact me, try to send them to, and it's like, I'm just, it's just not my thing. You know, maybe at some point it might be my thing, but it is not my thing right now. So let me know what you guys think about the footage from this camera. Um, I am going to, of course, color grade it uh, because I am shooting in, uh, in D-Log. Uh, but I'm going to uh, color grade it and uh, let's see what it looks like. I hope I'm really happy with it because I think this is going to be my new moto vlog setup for 2024. I think it's going to be the DJI Osmo Action 4 with the DJI mic. And for those of you that haven't seen the previous videos, you can check those out about my audio setup and how I've got the I've got a magnet, little square 3M magnet up under in my helmet where the DJI mic magnetizes to and sticks right to, so it stays right there. One thing I did today was I forgot the dead cat. So I'm anxious to see what this audio sounds like. It may be a little crispy uh, because, and you probably are hearing a lot more of the atmosphere, a lot more wind noise, a lot more from the motorcycle because I forgot the dead cat. Uh, but I normally have the dead cat on it so the microphone sits right there. It's comfortable, it's not in the way. I've seen a couple people that that took my suggestion and built this setup but they put the magnet right in the front of the helmet which causes the dead cat when you're using it to basically be in your mouth uh probably not advised uh so if you're gonna do this little trick get your when you get your little square magnet from amazon put it to the right or the left side um and that way when you clip the when the when the uh transmitter you know magnetizes to that magnet inside your helmet it's not right in front of your mouth and the dead cat's not you know trying to to go down your throat anyway guys I, I, it's probably a longer video than i intended to make which those of you that have been around for a while are like yeah we know steve you you want to make short videos you make long videos that's just the way it is the main thing is i am back i am going to start making content on a regular basis expect at least one video a week from right now moving forward and I'm making that commitment to you guys and I'm looking and really uh, I'm really excited about it so thank you guys for joining me for this video if you loved it make sure you smash the thumbs up button you know the like button if you're not subscribed to the channel which it's so funny to look at the analytics and see how many people watch the videos that are actually not subscribed 
click the subscription button, join the community, hang out for a little while. Anyway, guys, till the next video, I appreciate you all being here and I will see you in the next.